The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. In everything do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it, for the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we are now at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus enunciates the Golden Rule, which pretty much summarizes the whole sermon. What's interesting is that in many other contexts, religions, and so forth, this rule is stated in the negative. Do not do to others what you would not want done to you. That's sometimes called the silver rule. Jesus puts it more in the positive. Do to others as you would have them do to you, which is much more expansive. Because after all, it's easier to refrain from hurting someone than it is to actually take the initiative and go out of your way and make that decision to help another person because that involves your will and actually doing something. The golden rule is basically the foundation of active goodness and mercy that's found throughout the gospel. It's similar to the Old Testament, actually, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, where it states to love your neighbor as yourself. It's the kind of love that God shows us basically every day and the kind of love that we are to imitate. And we have an example of that in today's first reading from the book of Genesis, where we have Abram and Lot. They're both prospering. And because their herds are so large, the herdsmen are actually in conflict with one another. And so when faced with a potential conflict, with his nephew Lot, Abraham takes the initiative in settling a potential dispute. He gives first choice to Lot. And he basically says, whatever you choose, I will take whatever is left over. He says, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herds and my herders, for we are kindred. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. Even though Abraham was senior to Lot and therefore had the primacy of choice, he deferred. And that was basically the golden rule. He put the interest of others ahead of himself. And that's what St. Paul says. Don't just think of your own interest, but think of the interest of others and put them ahead of you. Now, because Abram did this, a whole principle started to be enacted, seen in a prefiguring of the rule that Jesus would teach in the New Testament. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things shall be done unto you. And because Abram was a man of faith, he could afford to be generous. He trusted God. And so how does God respond? The Lord said to Abram, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. Rise up, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. There's the principle. When we enact the golden rule and be generous, take the initiative, God is never outdone in generosity, and he pours more grace to us, and that is to enable us to do even more good works. Now today we celebrate the memorial of two great saints who, again, put in practice the golden rule, because what they did, this is St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More, 
they put the interests of God and the church ahead of their own safety. You know the story when King Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife, Queen Catherine of Aragon, because she was barren. They would not support him, these two great saints, because the Pope did not grant the dispensation. There was no grounds for an annulment. And the king put his own interests now ahead of everyone, and he threatened our two saints. St. John Fisher was born in 1496. He was an eminent theologian, Bishop of Rochester, and he defended the queen, and he refused to sign the act of succession, which the king had put forward, which uh, he tried to override papal authority. And so Fisher was put in prison in the tower. While he was in prison, the pope made him cardinal, which angered the king all the more, and King Henry had St. John Fisher beheaded. Thomas More was born in 1478. He was a lawyer, he was a family man, was made Lord Chancellor of England. Great authority, great power, and yet, again, he deferred to the church and to God. He resigned his position because he opposed the king, and he would not sign the act of succession. He, too, was imprisoned in the Tower of London, and eventually he was beheaded as well. So we have examples in these two saints of the golden rule, and of course now God has heaped glory upon them because they're saints in heaven, canonized forever in the beatific vision. It's a wonderful set of readings for us to contemplate because every day we have choices to make, and it's easy to be a bit selfish and say, well, I'll I'll refrain doing evil as I understand it, but I won't take the initiative to do what I know needs to be done. Let us ask the Lord for grace as we continue to live out our call to holiness and become what we're called to be as well, saints.